Shalom, everyone. This is David Klug, and my dear wife, Leslie, is hey, with me. Shalom, shalom. Hallelujah. And Great to see you. <laughs> hallelujah. Uh, Aaron Hutter is with us in his uh, soundproofing room. Hey, folks. I'm uh, over here in the corner, so I'm always here. I just a lot of times, you know, off camera. Out of sight, maybe you know, standing above you somewhere or sitting above you when we meet together. He's the brains behind the, all this technology here. I really appreciate Aaron for having us over, and I have a, an exciting message. I hope that you will enjoy and be edified and encouraged on this seventh day of unleavened bread, which is also the fourth day of the counting of the Omer and what all that means, and and especially in res in relation to the resurrection of Yeshua that we celebrated on the first day of this count back on the first day of the week and then also um, what we're counting towards what we're eagerly expecting as we count 50 days to Shavuot and what that what that means and what we're um, we, what we can expect from the Holy Spirit from Yeshua um, Giving up, giving us of His Spirit. So let's start with prayer, shall we? On this special High Holy Day, Father, we praise you and we thank you that you have given us these holidays, these festivals, these special days where we can um, just focus on you, where we can come together to learn of you, learn together, and that everyone who is watching and, and listening right now would be edified and encouraged i pray and they would uh, see the festivals in a new light and they would see your plan the plan of salvation the plan for our future as well the glorious destiny that we have and how you have great things in store for us and that, how we can look forward to better times ahead for those who are in the kingdom and how um you you're orchestrating it all you're just putting in all this together for us to have um greater works greater things better things ahead for all of us even for our children for all ages and we thank you for it in yeshua's name amen hallelujah praise yeah so I just wanted to share how I really, really appreciate these festivals um, in one aspect being that it focuses me on what his purpose is for my life, for my wife's life, for your life, all of our lives together as a body. I, I love to, to see his plan and remember what he has done, where he's brought us from, and where he's heading us towards where our, our goal is, where our, our focus, our, our uh, destiny is in these end times. Because we get you know caught up in things of, of the world, of you know, our daily lives, making a living, um, taking care of one another, taking care of the spouse or the children, if you have children. And taking care of the house. Taking care of the house, yeah. Uh, we've got the living out, but uh, we've also been getting the living out of our, our souls as well, right? Where we're trying to get cleaned up in many different ways, um, and that's what the unleavened bread's about. The unleavened nature of of Yeshua is what we're aspiring towards, what we're taking in, and what we're trying to be more like, more like Him. Right? Hey, David, real, real quick, for if there's anybody that's joining us, mm -hmm. that uh, this is kind of a new idea for us, uh, for for them, uh -huh. explain that correlation between you know getting the leaven out of the house, actual physical yeah. unleavened, versus what we're talking about in in our in our hearts. Yes. Yeah, so, so what is leavening? Leavening is yeast, commonly known as yeast. And yeast leavens or puffs up bread. It raises it. And so how does that uh, represent something that uh, we don't want? Because he said to eat only unleavened bread. Well, leavening can represent what puffs up inside of our souls. Like uh, something I've got to be really careful about is uh, being puffed up with knowledge. You know, I love the word. I love to study, but I, I can get so puffed up in my, my knowledge of the scriptures that then I uh, lose focus. I lose my, my humble heart towards others and, and loving them. And uh, so that I realize we're all on, a, on the same page, basically. We're all equal. We're all brothers and sisters yeah. in Messiah. 
Yeah. And yeah. So some of us have other gifts, and yours is a thirst for the knowledge, and you yeah. and you quench that thirst very well. And that's one thing I really appreciate about you, David, is just how much knowledge you have and the and the the heart that you have to share that knowledge. So, Amen. Thanks for and doing this, by the way. Hallelujah. And and. The primary purpose for that, of course, is to encourage and build up your faith, our faith, because uh, it's our faith that is going to carry us through these hard times, these end times that we're in. And uh, faith is the antidote for fear. You know, there's a lot of panic in this pandemic, and fear is the false evidence appearing real um, that uh, can cause people to uh, do crazy things, strange things. Um, so my, my purpose here is to build our faith in Yeshua because faith has an object. You know, faith is something we, someone we look to and put our trust in. Faith isn't just an object in itself that we want more faith, but we want more trust in our Messiah, in Yeshua, in our Father in heaven and, and um, what he is doing in us and what he can do for us and what he will do for us. Hallelujah. Um, there's other things that can leaven you too. They can puff you up. There's uh, there's pride, um, not just of knowledge, but there's pride in, of other things that that um, can cause you to uh, be leavened, and that can be like contagious in your heart. That it affects everything in your thinking, your emotions, and um, there's lust in the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. Those things can be contagious, and we don't want that to be contagious. We want uh, the Word and the Spirit to be contagious, right? And uh, pass that on. Spread that. Spread the good news around. Hallelujah. So that's what I've got um, prepared for you. Some is a good perspective, I, I hope, for you on the good news that we press on towards, that we focus on. Um, I like to start with Philippians 3, verses 12 to 14. Let's go to the book of Philippians 3, verses 12 to 14. This is Paul's writing. Um, and it's about his goal, his pressing on, and his destiny that uh, he was going for in life that I like to adapt in, in my life. Not that I have already obtained this or been perfected, but I press on. If only I might take hold of that for which Messiah Yeshua took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself as having taken hold of this, but this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward calling of God in Messiah Yeshua. So this reminds me of like when I was a, a teenager in track and I was running a race, I remember at, in a track meet and I was doing way better. I was smoking the guy behind me and I couldn't believe it because I'd never hadn't done that before. And uh, I was actually looking at behind me. I was going, wow, I'm the way ahead of this guy. How, how's that? How's that working? And the coach was yelling at me saying, don't look back. Don't look back. Keep your head straight. Don't look back, David. Don't look back. I was back. slowing down. I was slowing down because I was turning back. And that, and that can be a form of pride, too. Like, oh, I'm turning back and seeing what, you know, how far ahead I am compared to other people. But I had to keep my eyes on the goal. Hallelujah. I had to keep my my focus on the finish line where I was headed and strive for that and press on towards that and forget for about what I had just run and who was running behind me, but press on towards that mark, towards the, the finish line. And that's what Paul was talking about. I think he was alluding to somebody who's a, a runner who competes and who um, presses on, gives the most that he has. And, you know, and when you press on, when you're an athlete and you're exercising and you're, and you're really trying to be in your in the top performance that you can be, that um, you, you got to breathe hard, you got to work hard, you got to you know, give it your all. Um, you're going to be laboring a bit, be laboring a bit, yeah. And so that breath that's that's inside of you is like the Holy Spirit that's inside of us. 
when we press on towards the mark of, of this prize of the upward calling of God and Messiah Yeshua, it's, it's we need to breathe deeply in the spirit of Yah, right, and the word of Yah, and, and exhale and then speak out what he has for us to say and uh, give it our all. Give, breathe in deep and exhale and exhale uh, uh, the spirit of Yah for others to, to hear and to see. So that's what I think of too in, um, in this analogy on pressing on. And what is this goal for the prize? What is the prize that, that Paul was talking about? I think we have to go back uh, a few verses and, and see what he was talking about here. Um, Philippians 3 verse 10 says, My aim is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings becoming like him in his death. So his aim was to know the Messiah. And that's my aim, and that's your aim, and that's what I pray that we're all learning more in these festivals is who the Messiah is, what he's doing, um, what's he, what he's doing in us, how he's gathering us together and preparing us for being his bride and bringing, being back in the land together. And, and um, for this, this end time harvest that Rollin was writing about, the harvest that we're in. And so let's, let's, let's think about that. What is this harvest and how does that relate to this aim, to this uh, goal that Paul is talking about? Well, the first harvest in the, in the spring at the first day of the counting of the Omer was the barley, the first sheaf of barley was gathered together and it was, it was a uh, wave before, um, before the, the father in, in the, in the tabernacle. And, uh, that barley represents the carnal nature, the brown barley carnal nature. It was the animal feed. It wasn't what you would, you would really want as your ideal food to make bread out of. But uh, then later on in, in the season, um, 50 days later, they would make these huge loaves made out of wheat, representing the great wheat harvest, the golden wheat, which represents the golden uh, spiritual nature that we that we all aspire to, to be, to have, to walk in. Right, so we're pressing on towards you know being less carnal and more more of spiritual, more of the spirit, um, and more of not just knowing Him, but more about the resurrection life that's within us. Because leaven can also represent the kingdom of Elohim. There's two sides of every Hebrew coin, if you will. There's the there's a negative side and there's a positive side. And even with leaven, there's a negative side can represent sin and pride and what puffs up. But it also can represent the kingdom of heaven. Yeshua said it was like a woman who put three measures of leaven in, in a lump and it, it leavened the whole lump. And so the kingdom of God, his righteousness, his peace, his joy in the Holy Spirit, those are the king, that's the kingdom. The kingdom of God is like leaven that infects it, that is contagious, that uh, that uh, permeates, that's a better word, permeates everything in our lives and, and others as well. And so that's what I believe those, those two big loaves that the priests waved on the day of Shavuot, 50 days later, which we got only 46 days counting towards that big day. Um, that's, that's what I believe that represents. The two houses of Israel in his hands, Hallelujah, with the leaven of the kingdom permeating and, and building and puff then yeah, making them larger, enlarging them. Just yeah. Growing them. Growing them up, yeah. yeah. Yeah, spiritually growing. That's yeah, it's a picture of spiritual growth. Hallelujah. So so what is that prize again of the upward calling of God in Messiah Yeshua? It's to, to grow spiritually, it's to um be more about his kingdom. His kingdom is within us, he said. It's not outside of us, it's within us. And more of the kingdom within us growing and, and permeating our lives. And that kingdom has a king, right? And the kingdom That's is why ruled it's by called kingdom. Kingdom, <laughs> yeah, it's ruled by King Yeshua. And so it's also a, a time to submit more 
to give more of our lives over, more of our hearts over, more of our thinking, our emotions, everything over to the, to the Lordship of Yeshua, our Messiah. Hallelujah. And that's what we're called to do is, is to um, be a better follower of his, to be more like him, imitate him, and, and to... Uh, and to have him living within us so that like in Paul said in Galatians 2 20 he said that it's not I that lives but it's the Messiah who lives in me he's crucified he said he was crucified with the Messiah and nevertheless not I live but the Messiah lives in me I think that's really what the goal is all about that we're pressing on towards hallelujah so press on with me shall we as we uh, count these days, um, I also have a chart that I put out, um, I've offered, and I've given it, handed out to others that that have the seven attributes of who Yeshua is, and uh, and it's as, uh, aspects or attributes that we all want to aspire to, all want to have. Uh, be more in our nature and, and more in our at attitudes, especially um, like loving kindness, um, strength, the strength of the spirit, of uh, uh, glory, beauty, for the beauty of the spirit of holiness. And those are the three that we're, we've been going on lately. But um, yeah, so it's, it's thinking about Yeshua and, and knowing him and, uh, Becoming more like him is really, I believe, the goal that that Paul was after, to be as much like him as, as he could be. Hallelujah. Because he, he's, he's awesome. He's an awesome Messiah, and he's done a lot for me. I know that he's resurrected me and my life. And that's Paul said that um, he wanted to know him and the power of his resurrection, and I can testify that I was dead in trespasses and sin. I was a waste dough. I was a stoner. I had a stony heart. And uh, I was miserable in Mitzrayim, Egypt. And um, I couldn't, I didn't have feelings for anybody or even for myself. I was just, I was, uh, I, I was lost. And I, and he found me and he resurrected me. And he gave me new life. And now I can testify that I have more vitality and life in me and more feeling in my heart for other people than I did back in my early 20s. In my late 50s, I've, I've got the resurrection life of Messiah in me is what motivates and drives me and gives me energy and gives me joy and gives me the joy of Yahweh is my strength. And, and I found that in my lovely wife, too. And... Uh, when she came, she just, into my life, she just uh, augmented, she just um, raised that, that level of, of life and, and joy in, in our lives. Hallelujah. So I appreciate her. And, uh, and he brings people like that into our lives, right? He, he brings, um, yeah. amen, he brings people, we have fellowships together where we can encourage one another and love one another that way and, and impart life you know, resurrection life and just uh, get people motivated again. That's, that's really who I want to be is a, a motivator. And uh, I know that love is the greatest motivation, motivation force in, in the universe. And in my life is his love for me because he loved me so much that he would die for me, that he would give his life for me, that he would take the punishment I deserved and, and because he loved me that much, I love him, and I love you, and I love everyone here. And, and love is what helps me run the race. Love is is a, is a driving force in my life. Hallelujah. And I pray it would be more so as we count this, the Omer, that as we grow to be more like Yeshua, we would grow to be especially more loving, more kind, more merciful, and more giving, more selfless, um, as he is, as he is, hallelujah. And in that way, we'll all be built up, because it's love that builds up. And we'll all be like those two big loaves in his hands, hallelujah, in one day. So this cycle, I pray, <clears throat> this cycle of this festival, this 50-day cycle that we're going through every year, is uh, a cycle that is helps us, trains us. It's like it uh, prepares us 
for the big day when we will cross the finish line and and we will uh, experience the resurrection after after our mortal bodies pass away we'll we have that to look forward to but you know um it's really cool about what yeshua had to say to martha we've been talking about martha lately with some friends and you know you know martha gets a bad rap <clears throat> Martha was known to be the, the lady, the woman, that the sister that uh, was busy, you know, in the kitchen, preparing things, getting food ready for all the disciples. And, uh, and then Yeshua tells Martha that, you know, Mary's doing the better thing. She's sitting at my feet. You're, you're cumbered with doing all these things. But then I think Martha has a turnaround because I want to look at Martha in John chapter 11. Um, verses 17 to 27. Uh, was, they had just discovered that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days. And there were many Judeans there that come to Martha and Miriam. And when Martha heard that Yeshua was coming, she went out to meet him. But Miriam sat in the house. So here Martha's going out to meet Yeshua. He's, she's pursuing Yeshua. But Miriam was sitting in the house. And Martha says to Yeshua, Master, if you had been there, been here, my brother would not have died. But I know even now that whatever you may ask of God, he will give you. And Yeshua said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And isn't that the way most of us feel about the resurrection? is that we're looking forward to it on the last day after we're dead and then we'll be raised up. Well, Yeshua said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, shall live. That is to have resurrection life, to have life in your body. And, it's, and there's also another scripture that I love to quote and pray too. It's in my prayer life, is that um, for Yahweh to quicken your mortal body, my mortal body, by the same spirit that rose the Messiah from the dead. May he quicken, make alive, energize, and motivate you in your mortal bodies as well. Hallelujah. So that you can be all you can be for him, serve him, um, be your best. You've heard that phrase lately, be your best. <laughs> That's kind of a rallying cry. Well, he wants us to be our best, and he, he helps us to be the best we can be, what we're created to be by that spirit, by that resurrection, resurrection life that's within us that he gives us. Hallelujah. So may this time be a time of a resurrection life experience. And as you grow in spirit and grow um, in zeal for him, you know, to do his will. So what do you all think? Are you enjoying this count this time, this have you enjoyed the festival yes. of unleavened bread? Yes. Yeah. What did you enjoy about unleavened bread? Well, the festival of unleavened bread makes me think of um, how we are to take sin out of our life and how when we don't eat leavening, our body actually gets rid of the leaven, the, the um, yeast. And so, so many people have an overgrowth of yeast in their system because mm. they do not keep the feast. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of good reasons to keep the festivals, huh? Give our bodies a break from yeast. Uh, yeah, we, we uh, uh, with the girls, the little girls, you know, they're finally old enough to really kind of start telling the story to, you know, we started with the Passover story that we just, we just passed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it's been fun to kind of go through and start telling the stories of why we do some of the things. So mm -hmm. that's, that's been fun for us. Hallelujah. I love the story. The Passover also really helps me understand what even happened in my life when I was saved and born again and I was delivered from the drugs I was in. And I, I, I really didn't even have a good understanding of what happened in my life until I started keeping Passover and, and seeing these, these word pictures, these living word pictures of, of how you know, they applied the blood on the doorposts and they were delivered from the plagues that were raining and from the slavery that they were under. I was a slave to sin and I got free. And it, it's just awesome to, to see, to remember what Yeshua had done in me through the lies, vicariously, if you will, through the, 
the lives of the children of Israel and how they, they were pulled out and delivered from their in slavery as well. So it, keeping these festivals really teaches what he's doing in us that we may not even realize mm-hmm. if we didn't keep them because he's doing a work in all of us and it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's, it's nice to kind of have these times to stop for a moment and refocus, you know, and there's with the multiple different festivals we have, there's a different focus kind of in each one of them or, you know, or a different aspect that we can kind of bring out, which is kind of nice to, yeah. to have those reminders throughout the year. Uh-huh. Cause uh-huh. you know, if we didn't have that, uh, we would just keep going through the full year and just like, a year right. would pass. We wouldn't know what's going on. And yeah, it was nice to have those forced breaks. And stuff. Yeah. They help us get our focus back on mm-hmm. what's really important in life, our purpose in life, and so our I, destiny. So, yeah. David, I have a, a question. You know, we keep talking about you know, counting the Omer. What is the Omer? Omer, yeah. Well, the first occurrence of the Omer is in Exodus 16, where we see that their children of Israel were commanded to gather, co- an, gather omer. an Omer, a uh, measure. Uh, omer is a measure of man. It's called in Hebrew or manna. Man, which literally is translated as, what's this? What? Who is he? Who is, yeah. Man who is what they first say. Well, man who means... Who? Who is he? Because there is no it in Hebrew. So, and you know, you could translate it, what is, what is it? But they literally said, who is he? And we know who that he is in Yeshua. And he yeah. is the bread from heaven that that manna typified, right? Because yeah. it was just enough to sustain them, to nourish them, to strengthen them. They gathered an omer that was sufficient for their day. Hallelujah. And Yeshua is is all that for our every days. Yeah. So they so they gra- so they gathered a measure of what they needed. Yeah, it was just enough. And if they gathered too much, then it would go rotten. Mm-hmm. Right? And they were commanded to gather twice as much on the sixth day mm-hmm. so that they could rest on the seventh. And it would be fresh, fresh manna. So we're, we're to bring our manna in when we, um, the sooner this, this whole thing ends, that we have the stay-at-home order imposed on us, um, the we better. We gather again. What we can mm-hmm. gather again. I'm excited. I can't hardly wait. Fresh manna. And Leslie and I are just really <laughs> <laughs> wanting to bring some fresh manna to you. And, yeah. and I'm sure you have some good stuff for us, too. From what you've learned all these days of being, you know, in your prayer closet, shut up in your homes and in the word i'm hoping and praying i'm I'm sure you have been many of you i know you are Um, and i know you got some great stuff to share with us and i can hardly wait to hear from you so what are what are some other uh things that we could be doing or are looking at or focusing on during the the 50 days of counting the omer what you know are there are there anything uh you know, any activities that would be good to kind of be thinking about or doing that would be, you know, still around this whole idea? Around the count? Mm-hmm. Well, this one scripture comes to mind in Psalms is to teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So as we number our days, these 50 days, we're to also be thinking about the days we have left on this earth as, you know, here we are in our 50s and we only have a finite number of days he knows how many there are and it's to make the most of every day no the most of every opportunity every day because every day matters every day counts we're counting those days every decision you make matters is it going to increase the kingdom advance the kingdom of god or is it just going to you know detract away from it or are we just getting sidetracked off with things that really don't matter so it helps us to, to focus on what really matters and make the most of those things that's, that's what i think about mm-hmm. so when when uh what is the date that uh the the 50 days end and so people can have an easier idea of if they watch oh. this video a week from today uh may, when, when that is yeah it'll be may 31st May 31st is uh, 
the 50th day of the count. And it's really easy for Leslie and I to remember because that's our anniversary. Hallelujah. So, but we'll be celebrating with you and then we're going to go celebrate our anniversary on June 1st. But yeah, the end of this of, of May, May 31st is the big day. And um, we'd love to hear from you where you'd like to meet. And um, we want to make sure we all gather together for that and have a, have a celebration and, and expect a move of the Holy Spirit, you know. Yeah, ho hopefully we the uh, the stay at home orders will lift. It sounds yeah, like there's sounds some like movement in that, uh, and and if that is the case, I'm I'm sure that uh, be an awesome day. we will have something. So yeah. you know, check check out the website uh, mvfsilverton.com, and and you can sign up for the newsletter there if you don't already have it. Right. And if we get anything planned, then you know Probably, that'll yeah. that'll come out in that newsletter. So right. Also, uh, failure. To say that uh, this is Leslie's birthday today, the 15th of April. <laughs> and so we just uh, remember her in your prayers and, and, Brad. and uh, give her a call. Brad Riddle. Oh, yeah, Brad Riddle's birthday is on the 15th as well. Hallelujah. So Chad and Grant Siddick. Chad and Grant Siddick. If you remember the Zidics, they're the talented musicians that have led praise and worship. Popular day. Back in the RF days yeah. of Rest Restoration Fellowship. And, and I'm sure they're still they're still making music, beautiful music for Yahweh. Um, yeah, so it's a very special day f for us, and um, it's our privilege to be here and uh, to bless you and um, challenge you, challenge you to press on, um, strive, for, strain for the goal, the mark of the prize. We got a prize ahead of us. Hallelujah! And yeah, that prize is to be transformed out of this you know this mortal body into a glorious body one day and for all of us to be together in the land and in the new jerusalem and and be celebrating these festivals i believe with the messiah hallelujah and we got a glorious destiny a bright future ahead of us and much to look forward to not just in the life afterwards and in the after the resurrection of the dead but in our day, hallelujah, this, I really believe this can be either the best of times, if you're on the right side, or <laughs> it can be the worst of times. If you're not. If you're not, <laughs> yeah. It can either be joyful and, and um, exciting times, or it can be miserable and depressing. So join us, hallelujah, as we, uh, as we go on a great adventure. This is a great adventure. And remember, <clears throat> always look ahead to the finish line. Yeah. Don't look over your shoulder at who's coming up behind right. you or, or where you may have been. Yeah. Keep, keep Don't looking let forward. your past drag you down. And if you have any shame or guilt in your heart, Yeshua is the Ashama offering. He he took your shame and guilt and and put it, nailed it on the cross and did away with that. He doesn't want you to, to be burdened down with the guilt of the past, the shame of the past, or, or the emotional impacts, the curses of the past, generational curses. He, he wants you free to run with everything you got towards him, towards the finish line, and give it every, give it all you have. Hallelujah. So take some action, like uh, Aaron likes to say, and um, what? Yeah, give it all you got. Hallelujah! You've got talents. We all have giftings. We all have something to offer. We all have something to do in the kingdom. And um, His resurrection life within us will definitely empower us to do greater things. And I'm looking forward to that. I really believe greater things are about to happen mm -hmm. and are happening yeah. in our day. And I'm um, can't. Can't wait to see more app. Yeah, more app. Yeah. So, so if, uh, you got anything else? Uh, no. Okay. Good. Yeah. So, uh, if you if you like this video, give us a like. That would be great. Share it with your friends. Uh, however you want to or whatever social media tell people you know hey check this video out uh, as well as click su subscribe uh, uh, if you if you like this and and you'll see when new stuff comes up so um, check us out on our our website mvfsilverton.com um, you know you can sign up for the newsletter there to keep track of what we're doing and when we get out of the uh, the stay-at-home orders you'll see where we're, where we're meeting back up again um, other than that, uh, have a
have a, a blessed day. And uh, David, will you take us out in prayer? Okay. Father, we praise you and we thank you for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, this cycle, this seven-day cycle that we can strive to attain to be more like you, Yeshua, in your sinless, unleavened, humble nature. I pray that those who are, are suffering and, and hurting right now uh, over the, the hardships of life, over the, the pressures in life, uh, that you would encourage and build them up. Hallelujah. And that this counting of the Omer, they would eagerly expect a, a better day. They would know there's a better day ahead of them and that you just want to pour your spirit out and just really empower all of us together and for greater works. And we have that hope. We have that expectation, build that expectation, our faith. And until uh, we meet again, Father, I pray that you would make a way, that you would just make for an awesome meeting on Shavuot, on May 31st, when we're all able to get together again. Yes. You make the way, you set the place, you make it happen, and you bring everybody together as possible, as many as possible, I pray, and, and uh, just raise our expectation for an awesome meeting in Yeshua's name. Amen. Hallelujah.